It's one of the questions we always have with these little Chinese red dots that you get on Amazon. Are they durable and are they accurate? Can you bet your life on them? Well, we're going to find out here today. But the first thing we need to do is mount this thing onto its little riser and then get that riser mounted onto our test rifle and put some rounds down range. We're going to freeze this thing. We're going to drop this thing. We're going to beat the crap out of this thing and see if we can break it. All right, let's get to it. Welcome back, Original Gangsters. Officer Greg out here with you to show you the GoWutar. This is the HHC A18 Red Dot Optic. Okay, nothing special about it. It's a closed emitter optic. It's just a little black box that sits on your pistol or rifle. I think that these closed emitter optics are a little boxy. They're kind of like a little mailbox sitting on top of the slide of your pistol. They sort of look like a little toaster oven sitting up there. And I think they're a little too blocky for a pistol. But, but today we're going to mount one on our test platform rifle. That's the Davidson Defense DD-15, the Journeyman. We're going to mount this little red dot optic on this using their little riser that they include in the package. And we're going to start doing some torture testing on this thing. I've always kind of wanted to see if we can break one of these things. The important thing to remember here is just go and do precise hit. So super quick, here's what you get inside the box if you were to buy one of these. Obviously all the little junk that you normally get. Evidently a little plastic baggie of nothing. That's just Chinese air. They're trying to send out some of their smog to us. We have a little baggies of screws, which even if I don't use them on this, it's always good to hold some of these things aside. We have an RMR mount for RMR footprint pistols. We have a rifle mount that's going to be handy for today. Gowotar also includes an MOS mount for Glock style pistols. Again, this essentially just mounts into the slide cut and basically becomes a Picatinny rail on top of your pistol. Not exactly the lowest mount that you could find for something like a pistol. Inside is a tasty little bag of silica gel and a whole bunch of little wrenches. And of course, the Gowotar HHC A18 itself. So this Gowutar HHC A18 is an enclosed red dot optic. Okay, so we probably already know that, but what that means is that this big old black clunky box encloses all of the electronic components inside the body of the sight. And that prevents things like rain and sand and mud, snow from getting inside and blocking that little laser light emitter onto the glass screen. It's basically like looking inside of your own electronic TV. One of the places where I think these optics have really come into their own these days is with this shake awake technology. You can mount this to a pistol and leave it in a bedside drawer or mount it to a rifle and leave it sitting in a closet. The optic goes to sleep, saving your battery life until the time then you pick that pistol or rifle up. The shake awake technology wakes up that dot and puts it right there in front of your eyes without you having to go and find the little on and off button in the dark under stress. So that's kind of cool. Shake awake technology is pretty good for a firearm that's going to sit quietly in the uh, in the reserve waiting for your emergency. So I kind of like that little feature and for something so low cost, it's actually pretty cool. Let's take one of these little yellow tiny post-it notes and head down range. We're going to paste this on the forehead of our guy at 50 yards away and see if we can nail this thing with the HHC A18 red dot optic right out of the box. Right there in the brain box. Let's see if we can hit that yellow tab at 50 yards away. Remember, if you're going to put this thing on a rifle permanently or a pistol, uh, use some blue or shit, even red Loctite. But I'm going to lightly snug down these screws because, as you guys know, 
these little Chinese screws are the first, the weakest point in these optics uh, packages, and they are likely to strip either the tool or the screw uh, long before I get the optic even on the rifle. So we're gonna break this thing, folks. We're definitely gonna break this thing. Okay, we've mounted our GoWooTar mailbox on top of this rifle in the appropriate place up here at the top of the receiver. These are Spear Gold Dot 62 grain, 5.56 ammo. This thing's straight out of the box. Uh, there has been no zeroing yet, so we're gonna see where it prints right out of the box. But of course, eyes and ears every single time you shoot. All right, 50 yards. Let's go ahead and do three control rounds just to see where it's printing. Rifle on safe. I feel pretty good about where that dot was held. Let's go take a look. Good Lord, out of the box. I printed a group over here about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter, definitely six inches right and two inches low. So let's go back and fix that group. Bring well, I hope you're as flabbergasted as I am. This is our second group. I was aiming at the little green man this time instead of the uh, yellow paper. This is our first group. I don't know why, but I printed an inch and a half, inch and a quarter group here, and they were completely off. Completely guessing, I ran 10 clicks to the left and six clicks up. Completely eyeballing it. Holy crap. Not only are we in there, but we somehow improved our little group. So, so I'd say our Gowutar is now on target and definitely ready for some abuse. Let's see if we can't break this thing. Hey, when you're done with this video, if you like an optic like this and you want one for your own rifle or a pistol, if you're that kind of guy, go down to the comment section, the comment section below this video where people comment. And this time we're gonna put three rounds in that yellow post-it note just to confirm, but man, I am uh, actually really impressed with that uh, second group and that was complete fly-by-night uh, range estimation there. On the yellow tag, here we go. There we go, we are in the yellow sticker. Let's mark those out and give it a little bit more of a beating, a real test. Now I don't often drop my rifles on water bottles, however, I have been known to drop them on the range. So let's go ahead and, this is a empty and safe rifle, by the way, folks. No rounds in the chamber. No magazine in the rifle. Let's go ahead and invert it and drop it on directly onto the Gowutar from about four and a half feet in the air. See what it does. In the interest of getting some good slow motion, I dropped this Gowutar about five times on the sandy deck out here at the range, appears to have no real damage. It's nice and dirty. It's got little bits of micro gravel here stuck in the battery cover slot. The little door is taking a little dirt, pistol grip, buttstock has taken some uh, little abuse to the front sight here as it bounced around on the ground. But five good impacts to the Gowutar. There is nothing loose. It did not shake the mount loose. It did not shake the optic loose. Let me turn up the brightness here for you a little bit, but I want to show you that the red dot is still visible. I'm not even sure if you can see that. There it is. Red dot is still visible inside the Gowutar after five good hits on the sandy range deck. Let's give it a couple rounds downrange and see if we're still anywhere near that yellow piece of paper and put it on that paper. See if we knocked ourselves out of zero. Three rounds, let's go take a look. We should have six rounds on that little piece of paper. All right, three of these were from our first test. I'm not even sure which three. One, two, three, four, five, and six. You can see I pulled one. However, those are all holding pretty much, well, half the size of my fist up there. And this is at 50 yards on that little tiny piece of paper. 
All right, so maybe you missed the sandy range deck and you hit the concrete deck. Well, let's go ahead and drop this Gotar in this safe and empty rifle onto this concrete range deck and see if we can't break it there. Okay, we dropped it right on top of the uh, Gotar from about four feet onto concrete. And we've got a little bit of red paint from our red line uh, kind of stuck on that little dial, but looks pretty cool. I don't think it did any damage. The Gotar is still nice and tight to its mount. And more importantly, the mount is still tight to the rifle. That's where I think the weak spot was gonna be. And let's go check this out. I just noticed this, here's how hard it hit that red uh, line in the concrete. It actually made a divot in the paint. Pretty good. I tell you, we're gonna break this thing. And I actually, uh, that's my goal is to break it. So let's see what we can do. Three rounds into the other post-it note, I'm gonna dim this red dot down just a hair. Brightness settings still work just fine. Three rounds into the yellow post-it note, and I blacked out those other six rounds that we had before this so we can tell which ones are new, hopefully. All right, let's go look. Here's something interesting, finally. So our three rounds, holy crap. Our drop on the concrete knocked our zero off by about six inches low and only, only our elevation. But I think it tightened up the accuracy on this thing. Look at that. Three rounds are all touching right about the chin. So we're gonna go back and switch that red dot back up six inches. We lost zero, but we are still holding a really, really tight group. Tighter group after the drop on concrete than after our drop on sand. That's unbelievable. I figured for the ultimate in torture test, I would submit this Gotar HHC A18 to one half hour of the view. If it can survive a half hour of the view, folks, this thing is indestructible. I mean, it's just appalling. It, it sickens me. I woke up this morning, I was so in, in, a, in a rage about what they are doing. Everybody stop, Record hold up, criminal hold up, hold up. Back. I call this one the taco torture test because, well, we're gonna subject the Gowutar HHC A18, not to a bunch of tacos, but to a Toyota Tacoma. I'm trying not to destroy my Davidson Defense rifle in this process, but I'm gonna put the Gowutar right here underneath the tire of the Toyota Tacoma, and we are going to pull forward and run over that thing. I don't know, this is kind of a silly test at this point, but. Let's go ahead and see if we knock it out of balance or if we loosen that mount. All right, this is after the Toyota Tacoma. Three rounds at the yellow sticky note. Okay, this is after the Toyota Tacoma. Uh, one, two, three rounds, they're a little high. That could be just me pulling them, me seeing it wrong. I didn't adjust the dot down super dim that time. So it could be my, uh, it could be that the, the sight was off just a hair, or it could be the fact that I just had a brighter dot, a little bit hard to see. That red dot, by the way, folks, more or less covers this whole thing at 50 yards. I have gone over to the other side of the range and picked up this arm of a eucalyptus tree. The uh, humble eucalyptus tree was uh, imported into the into California over a hundred years ago. They thought they were gonna make furniture out of them because it's such a hard wood. Well, it's also a very brittle wood, so it didn't work out very good for furniture. Cracked that furniture right apart. But it is gonna make some good optic knocking wood. We're gonna bang on this thing from all sides. See if we can't shake it loose in any way, shape, or form. I will tell you that after a couple of good hammers, this optic is still front to back, firm, side to side firm, twisty firm, will not shake even in its mount. That's kind of cool. Okay, we just banged on it a few times, quite a few times with this eucalyptus hardwood. All right, let's go ahead and put some more rounds downrange. We are hot. 
three rounds in the little green man. I marked out the four rounds we had before after the Tacoma. Three more rounds in the little green man after being beat on with a eucalyptus log. felt good. Let's put the rifle on safe and go take a look, see what we did. All right, after giving it the wood shampoo, the Gorutar was able to print one, two, three, and four. But oh gee, will it make me shoot like John Wick? No, not at all. For the next portion of this torture test, I put the Gowutar upside down in a dish of water for a submersion test. No surprise, but the dot worked just fine after hours underwater. But to really kick it in the nuts, I decided to freeze it overnight. I left the mount exposed so I could attach it to the rifle and take it with me to a Tau Flater Mouse video shoot. After an hour of thawing, I picked up the rifle and found the optics windows were cloudy and there was water inside, like water sloshing around inside. Had we finally found the killer of this red dot? You can just about see it kind of blurry in the camera. The red dot is actually still lit. Now even though the dot was gone, I was able to frame a bad guy target in the square window and make decent hits to the head out to about 25 yards or so. Now to try and dry this thing out, I decided to take it home and throw it in the oven at about 250 degrees. You need to get it uh, just hot enough to where it will boil away the moisture inside without hopefully damaging the electronics. Mind you, there's still a red dot inside of this optic. So I was trying not to burn it up, I was trying to just to evaporate the moisture. But we did find that freezing somehow cracked the case of this thing and allowed water inside. Well after two baking sessions at about 250 degrees, this was about 10 minutes and about 15 minutes, the water hadn't completely evaporated but the red dot was officially gone. So I think we finally found what killed the electronics inside this Gowutar. So next I took the pommel of a knife that I'm reviewing right now and used it to smash out the window of this Gowutar to try and dry it out. Now let me tell you, even with a glass breaking pommel here on the end of this Tour Knives Egress survival knife, it took me forever to actually break that little piece of glass. So there was somehow a compromise that allowed moisture in there, but I was able to break the glass out and you can see right here, the little red dot housing that's pretty much encapsulated by the aluminum protective housing. And you might even get a little idea here by looking at the sides, how the windage and elevation adjustments push on that little box in there and drive that red dot left and right. So there it is. We were finally able to ruin this thing mostly by freezing it in a block of ice. That's really what compromised it. I imagine if I had waited around long enough uh, we could have evaporated the water, the moisture out of that lens and still used it because the red dot was still alive. But as soon as I baked it in the oven, boy, that thing was pretty much dead. We somehow fried the internals. I took it out here on my trailer and beat the shit out of it with a five pound mallet to try and see what kind of damage we could do to the aluminum housing and what it would take to break that remaining window. It took a lot of wallops. I mean, serious two-handed hits to finally bend the aluminum casing a little bit and break that window. I mean, it took a lot of them. So this thing falling every once in a while on a concrete floor or floor of your kitchen is not going to bother it one bit. Now, if you like this type of optic, remember, go down here and check out the comment section. You may or may not find a way to get one of your own. I think it's a pretty damn little good red dot. I wouldn't put them on my pistol again, a little bit too big and clunky, but I would certainly put these on my rifle. All right, thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you like this. Give it a thumbs up, share it around, and if you're not already a subscriber, please do so. And until next video, OG out.